I'm live on iTunes, I mean, Elm Times Radio. I'm still looking up, actually. Today's show is not live. <laughs> I'm live on Elm Times Radio every Thursday evening. And I love to hear from you. I love to hear your questions about your show, your suggestions for the show, and um, just anything really about topics we've done. And you can um, contact me at my website, meetkathywilliams.com. Yes, I am Instagram and on Facebook. And you, uh, I... Try not to go on there that much, actually, just like a couple times a week. Um, but I do love YouTube, and you can also contact me there on YouTube under the videos. I see all those comments. I usually reply to them, and I'm happy to connect that way, too. So uh, meetkathywilliams.com is also where you can find a free money rain meditation and a create your life exercise and maybe that you know doing that can also inform some of your choices so we'll talk today about habits because um choosing good habits helps us you know create ease um a lot of times we think oh you know habits aren't choices and they actually are so we'll we'll dive into habits and um, into some easier ways of making choices. Because I know, like I, like I mentioned in the very beginning of the show, my mom taught me, and this was a great way for a kid, but also sometimes confusing. Hey, Kathy, a way to make a choice when you're not sure uh, is to draw a line down the center of a page and then list all the positives on one side and all the negatives on the other. So, okay, shall I go home for, you know, this person's birthday? Like, shall I fly there and go there and visit for their birthday? Well, yes, I would love to see them. That goes on the positive. Um, I do have that time off work already. Another positive. You know, all the positives. And then, well, I already have credit card debt. That goes on the negative side. Well, you know, it'd be kind of stressful to make it happen. That goes on the negative side. Whatever, I'm making up this scenario. And then you kind of look at the positives and the negatives and see, huh, what's going to be the, the more appropriate choice for me? Um, so that's how I grew up making big choices and, and big and little choices are different, right? Like you probably wouldn't do this with what to eat for breakfast. Oh, the oatmeal. Well, it's good for you. Well, you know, it's kind of bland, well, you know, like whatever it is. Some choices you just kind of know. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have a salad for lunch. That just is what's calling to me. Mm. Not gonna go out with that guy again. You just know, right? <laughs> and then other choices require a little bit more, hmm, I wonder. Um, so big choices, let's just look at what's a big choice, what's a little choice, and Access consciousness defines a big choice as something that will impact other people. So if I choose to move to South Africa, that's going to impact a lot of people, right? My children, my, my, you know, all my family, my friends, whatever. If I order the salad for lunch, that's not going to impact a lot of people. Now, okay, theoretically, we could get into, well, it impacts the tomato grower and the person at the restaurant, and they're going to order more lettuce in the future. We're not talking about that theoretical stuff. We're talking about, like, the choice to get married, big choice. The choice of which shoes to wear, little choice. You know, like that. 
Okay. And, and so everything, I'm just going to do a couple of clearings um, before we even go in, because everywhere now you're going to go through life wondering and, and having to figure out whether a choice is a big or a little one. Would you be willing to just destroy and then create that or collapse it all to energy? Wow, there's actually a lot of charge on that, which is fascinating. Right, but choice is kind of a highly charged topic, which is so interesting because it's something we've been doing for a long, long time. We could say since we were a baby. Okay? The choice to drink from the bottle or not. The choice, I mean, we don't have a huge amount of choice when we're a baby. The choice to cry or not. Okay? Um, then we, when we start to walk or say no, talk, now we have even more choice, you know. Um, so we're expert choice makers. And that might be something to start seeing yourself as. Okay, because if you see yourself as not good at making choices, well, that's actually going to shape the choices you make and how you make them. If you see yourself as, no, actually, I've been making choices for years, decades. I've been making choices for decades. I am an expert at choice making. Suddenly, it's, it's a whole different perspective, which allows you to see yourself in a new light. Okay? When we realize, oh my, I am actually good at this thing. It, it changes the way we do that thing. Yeah. Um, so why is it so many of us feel like we're not good at it if we've been doing it for so long? And part of it's because we so often want to get a choice right. We want to get a perfect we want to make the good choice, right? Which is why a lot of times we delay making a choice. Oh, I need all the information to make sure I make the perfect choice, the correct choice. Okay. Um, or rather, you know, and this is more like it, we just want to make sure we don't make the bad, the wrong, the, a terrible choice. Okay, so usually it's about more about avoiding the negative in this case, then, then, you know, the positive. And it's okay. okay. We're taught to try to not get it wrong. As though getting it, quote, wrong is terrible and, you know, we're at the end of the world. We sometimes have a sense that if I make all the right choices, I'm going to be successful or even be good enough whatever enough is, all right, for whomever that is for. And the, the funny thing is, well, when we look at really successful people, a lot of times they're the ones who are just willing to take the risk and fail, right? Like Jeff B. Bezos, the founder of Amazon, I, I was reading about him or listening to something I don't even remember, but I do remember this. One of his first things that he created, like business, um, businesses that led to Amazon, was he bought up all, all these toys, like toys for children, like stuffed animals, stuff like that. He bought them all up so he could then sell them on the internet. The only thing is, he didn't sell that many, so they were left with this giant, you know, toy collection in their garage, just toy after toy. So if you look at it, he failed. So why is it he, he's like, I don't know if he's the richest man in the U.S. or something, but, but like, very, well, before he got divorced. Now, there were some choices. <laughs> we're not going to talk about his choices um, as far as uh, sleeping with people, although we will talk about choices with sleeping with people because there are some amazing questions 
to ask around them. They're kind of fun questions and you can ask them in all sorts of situations, not just sleeping with people. Well, we won't go there yet, all right? Well, I'll just dangle that little carrot out. Um, and that you could do that even with your partner that you, you know, have been with for years. It's not just for people who uh, you know, are out in the town. So here's the thing we run into like, oh, I mean, it's so interesting that we think success comes from making the quote right choices. Yet when we look at really successful people, we see that actually they were willing to fail miserably. So if we take the word fail and we just look at that and we say, well, there's no failure. Right? It's all information. Yes, it was left with a garage full of toys that didn't sell. And if we don't make that wrong, if we don't judge it, that's just information. And toys, I guess. <laughs> um, <coughs> you'll, you'll have to forgive my humor. It is 6 a.m. humor here in Hawaii because I made the choice to do this show um, ahead of time. And, and let me tell you that story because it's quite interesting and it involves a really quick choice. So some of you know that just for fun, because I had the impulse or the nudge, like the intuitive nudge to go to massage school, um, I'm doing that three mornings a week, which is awesome. It's kind of fun and I'm getting body work all the time. And one afternoon, we were standing, like most of the people in my class and I were standing in our waiting room and the director came out and she said, there's a man teaching a workshop on January 30th and 31st. And she said who it was and he needs an extra body, like an extra person to be in the workshop. And she hadn't told us anything about what we were going to be learning like what's the topic of the workshop you know is it reflexology is it like head and neck massage is it craniosacral therapy is it, it could have been one of thousands of things she didn't tell us she all only told us he needs an, an extra body you get to attend for free and i hear this little voice in my head and it goes say yes so i'm like me and then a uh, uh, Another girl said, I'll do it. And the director said, well, Kathy said yes first. And my attitude in that situation was, I can always say yes, look up what it is, and then offer it to somebody else, right? Like the yes, and you know, in this situation, it was very clear in my head, the voice said, say yes, and so I did. Right. And a lot of times, like if you're just not willing to jump, then the opportunity, the possibility is, is given to somebody else. And I'm not saying jump all the time, but this would have been, even if I didn't have a little voice that said, say yes, this would have been a situation in which it's okay to say yes and then look at the calendar, because I hadn't even looked at the calendar, right? I just said, yes. Look at the calendar and be like, oh my gosh, I have six things going on. I can't do that. Would someone else like to do it, right? Not dangerous situation. Maybe, you know, when, when everyone's drinking shots and then they're inviting you to do something crazy, that's a moment to not say yes, right? But we know this. <laughs> So sometimes it's really about like, oh, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, I look at my calendar I, or, or the massage topic looks really boring I, or, or like something I'm totally not interested in, like going up people's noses. Mm. <laughs> and so, you know, the topic turned out to be like head, neck, jaw, throat stuff. Um, myofascial release, which is something 
I totally love receiving. So um, anyway, that's a fun story about choice. So that's why I'm here recording the show at six in the morning. And that too is a choice, right? It's like looking at the calendar, when will work best for us? But you know what? There are also some questions you can ask to make choosing times for things easier. So when we come right back to the show, that's where we'll kick off with the questions that make choosing appointment times or scheduling a whole lot easier. Thanks for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life on Ohm Times Radio, YouTube, SoundCloud, all the different places. I'm Kathy Williams and I'll be right back. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. Uh, today's show is about choice, and we're going to jump into this part of the show with questions for scheduling. And when I learn these kind of questions, questions help with choice, you know, monumentally. So when I learned these questions, it really created a lot of ease with choosing times for appointments and um, even scheduling the show. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the show started for me, because we're pre-recording, um, at six in the morning. And, you know, as I look at it, it's like, oh, well, I might have children waking up at six in the morning, or I might be groggy at six in the morning, or, 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 or. But this is the time that sort of popped. So one of the simple things I do for scheduling is, I'm, I'm going to guide you through two processes, okay? So the first is, and you can think of something you have to schedule or, or just listen. All right. What day? What, you know, which day? would work out well, okay? Work out well would be for me and for whomever is involved. And you go through the days, Monday. Mm, that feels kind of off. Tuesday, oh, yeah, there, it's, I sense some possibility with Tuesday. Wednesday, mm, Thursday, Friday. Friday feels even better. Then you kind of get a sense in your body of what the days feel like. Saturday, you know, Sunday. Mm. Okay. I have to schedule a, a, a session for someone. And so I can go through all those days and be like, eh, eh, eh. and of course, if you have their information, like, oh yeah, Thursday is not going to work. Then just don't ask about Thursday or do and get a sense of what does that feel like for me okay. all right so and and then you could ask okay morning let's pick tuesday okay. or whatever day you picked okay for the scenario we are working with morning afternoon okay. and you can always be also looking at the calendar but the thing about that is sometimes then our head gets in the way and our intuitive awareness is aware that, oh no, the car is going to be in the shop and it's going to be harder on Thursday, right? That our logical mind does not know. It knows things that the logical mind doesn't know. And know that things are always subject to, um, what do you call it? But uh, to change, really, as well. So we're, we're choosing a day. We're choosing morning or afternoon, and then we zoom in on like, okay, let's say afternoon. One o'clock, two o'clock, three, like that. I create all my classes that way. Or, and, and one of the easiest ways to do it with a class or something that's maybe further out, like a vacation, is be like, okay, which, which month? And then go through them, February. March, April, April, okay? And then you could keep going. Oh, but April feels really good. Okay, cool. All right, and, and you know, I get a lot of sensory information through my body. 
and I'll guide you through a process to do that. You may, like me, also hear things, like the little voice that said, say yes. You may um, have visuals. You may get a sense of like, this used to be my, my way of, you know, what's, what's true for me. I, I would get a sense like of, of being straight up and down or if something was off for me, I really would feel like I'm a little bit not straight up and down. Interesting way of getting information. It's like you get to sort of calibrate and you can ask yourself, okay, what is a really clear, like, yes, this is true for me. What is a really clear signal of no, it's not? And sometimes we get in our head about that. So I will give you an exercise. I will lead you through an exercise in a little bit. So once I've chosen the month, then I kind of take the calendar and look at it and be like, okay, so I've chosen April. Which day pops? And for me, it kind of is like popcorn or neon and just like, oh, you know, the 12th or something like that. So that's a way of just tapping into your own awareness to choose dates and times. And of course, sometimes it involves collaboration with someone else. You know, you could even ask, like, if I choose this date, would that be easy? Would it flow well? Would it feel good to me? Would I be happier afterwards? Questions give us more information. And so does choice, really. So let's say, you know, I mentioned in the beginning of the show, like so many of us are attached to getting our choices right or not making the wrong choice. And each time we choose, it actually gives us more information. So let's say I choose, yeah, April 12th. Sounds like a great day for my class. And then I get this like bad feeling in my gut. Like then I can ask, oh, would it really be a date that, you know, I'm happier for having the class? And then Oh, no. So let me choose a new one. All right. So every choice we make gives us information. Um, and it might just be like, wouldn't do that again in so many ways, right? <laughs> like a lot. Of, I mean, how often do we do something and then we're like, I knew it wasn't going to work out or I knew that, that, that it, it would work out. Um, so when we choose, it gives us information. I keep saying this because I want you to really get that because then you have the freedom to change your mind and choose again. So everywhere you've decided that you have no freedom and ability to change your mind or changing your mind means you're flaky or you're inconsistent or you're a bad person or anything like that, well, you take all of that all of that solidified energy and just collapse it back to free-flowing energy. Yeah. Just allow it to go. Because the truth is you always have the ability to change your mind. So I'm going to tell a little story about choice and changing your mind. So let's say you're at an event, maybe a party or a concert, and you're like, ah, how am I going to get home from this? I could take an Uber. I could find a friend. I could um, call call someone from home to take me home. I could, you know, take public transportation, whatever it is. So you have different possibilities. And someone says, oh, I'll take you home. It's no problem for me. And you say, yes, that's your choice. You say yes. And then immediately you get this feeling like, oh, wow, this uh, something feels off in your gut. Okay. 
So now's the time to ask more questions. Right? Maybe. What will it create if I go with this person? Now you could have asked that if you know that question, you could have asked that before. <laughs> but it's okay. You've just made the choice. Now you've got that uh, intensity in your belly. Like e okay. It feels off. You know that, yeah, this doesn't feel right to me. Right? So, and it might not be that this is a bad person. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying something feels off. We can't jump to that conclusion. Hmm? And maybe they want to stay for the after party and you're ready to go three hours before they are. Could be that they are not a good person, right? It could be that. They've had a few too many drinks, right? All we have right now is the bad feeling in our gut and the possibility of making a new choice, okay? And so what do you do? Do you choose a different choice? Or do you go with this person because you've said you would? And you override your own awareness, okay? The truth is a lot of us have learn to override our awareness. We make a choice, we get information, and then we override that. Oh, they really are a good person. I shouldn't be nervous about this, right? We talk ourselves out of what we know, right? And that is one reason a lot of us think we don't make good choices because we have in the past so much evidence of, you know, times we've overridden our awareness or times things that we chose didn't work out the way we thought they should. And that's a really important phrase, we thought they should. Right? Because a lot of times things are working to create magic in our lives and they don't go exactly as our little brain plans, so therefore we think it didn't work out. Instead of my favorite question, oh, one of them anyway, like, how can I use this to create something greater? Because then everything becomes a stepping stone. Like, even, oh my, now what do I do? I have this bad feeling in my gut, and I've already said yes. How can I use this to create something greater? Maybe it's that I get out of my comfort zone, and I say, you know what? Actually, it's going to be easier for me to take an Uber. All right, I'm kind of ready to go right now. So, you know, I look forward to seeing you at the next event. Right? It's not about them. It's about us and our awareness and the choice that's going to create better for us, more for us, greater for us in the future. All right. So even this choice for me to record the show now, you know, I knew I might have kids around. and. Usually one of them is still asleep, which is not the case today. <laughs> but this is the time that I, I could do it, and I knew it would create something greater. So that's what we choose. Now, a lot of times we're so aware of other, points, of other people's points of view about what we should or shouldn't choose, right? Should, in quotes. Um, and, or their perspective, or what they want us to choose. I mean, that's even why, as a lot of kids, and we want to please them, right? As kids, someone would be like, hey, I don't know if you had this experience, I totally did. Would you like Mexican or Chinese? I don't care. I don't care. Relieves us from the burden of having, having to make that choice and then be judged if it's not you know, what the other person wanted, or to offend them, or make them upset, or whatever it is. Ever do that? Oh, where would you like to go? I don't care. Anything's fine, right? <laughs> Even if we really feel like having some dim sum, you know, I, I'm, I'm really hankering for a stir fry, but I don't want to say, because um, they might want Mexican instead, okay? Now, um, we never only have two options. Well, never is a strong word, but so often we think we have either this or that, when really we can have both. So if I would really like to have Chinese food and the other person would like 
Mexican, we could be like, oh, let's just carry it out and eat it at the park, at a picnic table. Or let's order it delivered from both places and then we'll sit here on the couch and, and we'll play a board game or whatever it is. You know, like we think we have yes or no, either or. What if we have and? So in the last part of the show, well, yeah, in the last part of the show, I'm going to lead you through an exercise to help you have to tap in to your awareness with choice. You know, I keep talking about body sensations and stuff like that. Um, uh, I'll guide you through an exercise so that it's a lot easier to, to get a sense of like, what's, what is that? And before we go to break, let's just do uh, the questions to ask before sleeping with someone. So I use these not only with that, I learned them for that through access consciousness, but um, they're so useful before you begin any business venture. And, and not all of them are as applicable for each business venture or endeavor with another person. Yet they're all useful for getting information. So the first one, will it be easy? I'd rather work with someone who makes it easy. I'd rather sleep with someone who, who it's easy with than someone I have to like feel like I'm moving a ton of bricks in so many ways, right? Like, will it be easy? Now, that doesn't necessarily mean my accountant has to you know, have a huge yes to this answer um, if I, you know, for me to choose them. But will it be easy? Will it be fun? Okay. Similarly, I would kind of like an accountant who's, who's easy. It doesn't necessarily have to be fun, although it'd be amazing, right? If, if my accountant is fun. But the, the, the more important, well, for sex, yeah, will it be fun, right? <laughs> okay. Will I learn something? Okay, again, more relevant in certain situations than others. Now this one, super important one. Number four, will it be easy? Will it be fun? Will I learn something? Number four, will I be happier afterwards? Okay, I want an accountant who's, who I'm going to be happy about afterwards. You know, a lover who I'm going to be happier afterwards. Um, whatever business venture, I would like to be happier afterwards. Okay. And then there's the question, will it make me money? Will it bring, will it add a generative energy of life, of living, of joy to my life? Right? So those four questions, five questions, you can look at and be like, okay, which questions are more relevant to this exact situation? Yet they can all be super helpful when you're navigating your way through interpersonal relationships and business relationships. All right. Thank you so much for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. When we come back, I'm going to lead you through a little exercise. And you can visit my website, meetkathywilliams.com for links to show replays and i have one about awareness that you may like in relation to choice so that's an archives on om times radio iom.fm and also at my site meetkathywilliams.com be back in just a moment thanks a bunch twice oh there are so many choices we make. I mean, our lives are inundated with choice, especially now, you know, even just walking down the aisles of detergent or yogurt at the grocery store, we have choice. And like we talked about, some choices are big, some are little, yet all um, can be made by us tapping into our own awareness. And like I mentioned just a moment ago, I have a whole show on awareness. I think it was done spring of 2019. So you can look in the archives at iom.fm or even on iTunes, you know, you just type in sexy mom, abundant life, awareness, and then it'll, I, 
I believe that's how it works. I've searched that way before and not myself and my show, but you know, <laughs> and it just pops up or just search the internet and, and, um, I Heart radio will bring it to you or something like that. Um, so my kids, I hope you cannot hear them in the background because they are very loud this morning, which is not usually the case. And I'm going to lead you through a little exercise. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, you can use this exercise very quickly when you're trying to choose your next Audible book or book on Amazon or, you know, whatever it is in the grocery store or even choosing where to go on vacation. Um, so most of us are so aware of other people's points of view but, um, and want to help them and choose what's right for them. So one of the useful things I found is just to kind of like create space with my hands, like I'm pushing their points of view away, like back off. And I actually sometimes, when I'm really trying to get clear, and not, I do that, like back off. And that's for anything energetically that's creating interference for me. Just back off. Okay? So that I kind of have my little spacious bubble to be aware of what's really true for me. Okay? And then we kind of Take a couple of deep breaths. And then tap into the chest area, the heart. Not so much the physical heart, the energetic heart of our body. And often I just ask for three words that sort of like describe my experience if I choose something. So let's say you have a choice you'd like to make. Okay, if I choose this, what are three words that, ex that describe what that will create? And then something else, if I don't choose this, or if I choose this other thing, what are three words that describe that experience? You might have five words, you might get one word, you may just have a sensation. So often that's a really useful sort of inner navigational tool. And then we also have light and heavy. So think of a choice that you get to make and ask and tap into your chest area. How is my life in five years if I choose this and then name that possibility. And how is my life in five years if I don't? And get the sensation in your chest. Okay. And those two questions can help you differentiate one Sensation is usually much more expansive, ease-filled. One sensation is usually a little clunkier, um, more contracted. So the one that's ease-filled and more expansive, we term light. And the one that's sort of contractive, I mean, you could call it contractive. You could also call it heavy. Mm. So you learn to differentiate these and then it becomes really quick. You could be walking through a buffet line and just be like, oh, oh, that one's light, this one's heavy, that one's heavy, this one's light, like that. It becomes fast. 
the more you tune in. And that's the thing. We're not looking outside for the answers. Oh, what does my mother think I should do? You know, I made this mistake, actually. Uh, well, it's not a mistake. <laughs> it gave me more information, as we discussed in the first part of the show. So I was having some real questions for my life. And I chose to go have a session with, with an intuitive that I had had previous sessions with. And she was sick. And when I had my session with her, at the end, I left feeling like, well, that was so off. Now, here's the thing. Her session still gave me information. But it, I had to use my own inner navigational awareness, right? When something's feeling off, that's your own inner navigation. It's your intuitive guidance. That's your knowing. However you term it, right? trust that and ask more questions. Well, which part of it was off? You know, is it, is that really true for me? Is that a lie for me? What would it create if I do what she suggested? See, when I say that is like contractive in my chest, in my face, what would it create if I do this? Well, that feels better. Okay. So we often go to someone else, and often it confirms what we already know. But sometimes it's not. It's the opposite direction. And that's when we really have to look in and be like, is this true for me? I mean, always we get to tap in and be like, is this true for me? Trust those sensations of, it does feel off, okay? And so intuitives or psychics can be useful. You also have to check in with you because you're also intuitive, even if you disregard it, even if you don't trust it, okay? Now, if you need more evidence that you can trust yourself, write down choices you made when they worked out because what we do is we gather all this evidence that we're not good choice makers or whatever it is but we're only looking at half the story we haven't gathered all the evidence of oh my gosh i chose this and it worked out really well i chose my school and i loved it i chose my my partner and they're awesome i chose my shoes they really work for me i chose this house i love it i chose you know we're not looking at all that we're looking at the you know 17 choices or the you know all these that didn't work instead of like well i've actually made thousands of choices that have really worked for me so that's part of it coming back to reinforcing and acknowledging and reinforcing and acknowledging that you are an expert choice maker. Okay? Now, a lot of times we either listen or we don't. We listen to ourselves. We listen to that sensation of, you know, there's something fishy about this. We listen to, don't go down that street and our own awareness, and then there are the times we don't. And life goes so much better when we listen. Okay? We can always ask more questions. Okay? Oh, I'm getting to not go down that street. Uh, you know, what would it create if I did? E my old body freezes and gets tense. Oh. Is it safe on that street? Sense of no, whatever it is, right? I mean, you could look at all the choices you've made to, to go to the party or arrange the appointment or, or buy the car or whatever it is that have really worked for you. So if you feel like I'm not a good choice maker, I don't make good choices, you know, start to list out I'm a huge fan of journaling because it helps us 
you know, first it makes it gets us that kinesthetic body awareness. Second, it, it allows whatever's inside to kind of come out onto the page. And third, it, it allows us to really see it. It's so many benefits. And then you can come back to it. Oh, yeah, I have made really good choices. <laughs> um, and checking in with people, with other people, is not a wrong thing. It's just like, is it diluting my own awareness? Like, am I more likely to follow their awareness than mine? And you're the expert in what works for you. No one else knows as well as you what would work for you. Now, they can give pieces of the puzzle. They can inform. And also, uh, and, you know, would you be willing to make a choice and then tap into your awareness of, ah, yeah, that, that choice really does feel good. I've just made it. It feels good. Or there's something off about this choice, and I can always choose again. If you need to write yourself a big permission slip, Big permission slip. I have permission to change my mind as I get more information. And guess what? As soon as you make that choice, you have more information. Failure is not a problem because there's no such thing as failure. It's only feedback. That gives you the space to make a choice, to get more information, to change it. And when you were a kid, you knew that. You had that. Okay. Right. If, if you chose to go over and play in the sandbox and all of a sudden you're like, Ick, what is this stuff on my hands? I don't like it. You got out of the sandbox and made a different choice. Hmm. You might have loved, I loved this, this t-shirt with, um, ice cream cones on it. It was like my favorite. And then all of a sudden one day it wasn't my favorite. As kids, we knew we have permission to change our minds. And it's really important to allow, allow ourselves that now as well, because it gives us that adaptability. And someone else might judge that as flaky. Would you be willing to be judged? It's like a show in itself. <laughs> Would you be willing to have them see your choices as imperfect? As long as they're working for you, right? As long as the choices, not the people, the choices, maybe the people, <laughs> are working for you. They're okay. I've gone out to lunch and had chocolate cake and that's it. Well, everyone has their salads and their chickens and stuff like that. That was the most amazing. My body felt great having that chocolate cake. Now, was I judged? Maybe. Uh, I'm sure I know, actually, that some people judged that as, oh, wow, I wish I could do that. And guess what? They can. It's a choice. Thanks so much for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. I'll be back next Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern and noon Hawaii, where I am. You can always join me for a Hawaii retreat, your own customized one, or a, a group retreat by visiting meetkathywilliams.com. And I have classes online and you can be anywhere in the world in your pajamas so check them out at my website where you can also get a free create your life exercise thanks for listening everyone aloha have a great week and find us if you can't wait that long on soundcloud itunes iom thank you youtube yeah, that would be nice, or at least some coffee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, to coffee or not to coffee? Now we'll go with salts or water to start off with. So, yeah, it worked out. It's a choice. All right, have a great week. Thanks for uh, doing this with me.
Uh, this will air, it'll air on Thursday. I'll send the write up. Thanks a bunch. Bye.